fandoms can absolutely be life affirming and joyful. But as you all pointed out in the comments on my previous video about fandoms, they can also be really toxic. So today we're going to talk about how to survive and handle when your fandom becomes toxic. Hey everybody, welcome back, I'm Melissa Hunter. And today we're gonna get better together around fandoms and toxicity. So first of all, I wanna be really open with you about something. So when I made and we posted the video about how fandoms can save lives, they can be life-affirming, how life-affirming they've been for me in so many ways, when I started to see the comments come in and so many of you had just had really painful experiences around fandoms, I, I felt really bad. I felt like I had, you know, unintentionally triggered people in some way. I felt like maybe I had really missed the mark and I just, I, I, I felt like I messed up. And I just want to be really open about this because I think this is a, a common feeling that happens to us and then we never really talk about it. So I had this feeling like, oh man, I think I really screwed up. And then I had like that icy, icky feeling inside. And then I, you know, I took some time, I read the comments, I took some time to think about it. And I said, well, no, I didn't necessarily screw up. But what I do need to do is to provide all of these people who either are hurting or have been hurt or who are avoiding the joy of fandom because of previous bad experiences, I need to provide them with some tools and skills so that they can get back to enjoying what they love and, and getting the awesome energy and good vibes and goody goodness that comes from being part of a fandom. So that's what we are going to talk about today. Also, I'm going to share at the end of this video for the first time ever, my own kind of fandom horror story having to do with when I first became part of the Monster High fandom and how I handled that. And, and hopefully that will be a little bit of a, a story that will help you see like how you can go through a difficult time in a fandom and still stay there. So I did make notes because I'm trying to stay organized big part of the reason that fandoms become toxic is because we are hardwired, as I have said before, to form small groups. And those small groups are organized in such a way that they keep us alive, they keep us together. We, back 50,000 years ago, we needed those small groups. We needed the shelter, we needed to share the food, we needed to share the knowledge, we needed to share the caregiving, we needed to share all of those things. Now we don't necessarily need to share those things in the same way today, but we are, but the same structures and the same kind of hardwiring in the way that we form groups still exists. So what are those things that are the same from when we were living in caves or up in the mountains or wherever we were? Leadership. Every small group had a leader. Now, sometimes that leadership was shared between, you know, top hunter and, uh, you know, religious leader of some kind. Sometimes it was shared between the elders of that small group. And sometimes it was just one person who was the strongest person and just one leadership by beating the snot out of everybody else. But leadership. And in today's world, leadership takes the form of moderators, um, you know, people who form the server. Uh, in, in real world situations that are not about fandoms, you've got bosses, you've got teachers, you know, leadership is something we all understand. We are all hardwired to follow the leader. We're always looking for a leader. We're still wired to do that. Another thing that we have been doing for millennia is shunning dangerous people. So in order to protect our small group, we needed to form ways as a group to protect ourselves from someone within our group who becomes a danger. Like how the heck does that happen? It just does. Sometimes somebody starts acting in a way or doing things that's harmful to the group. So going back, back to my millennia ago cave analogy, hunter gatherer society or whatever, maybe someone was not sharing all the food. Maybe they're squirreling away food just for themselves. That's a danger to the group. You are endangering the lives of the entire group. So what did we do when someone was a danger to the group? We shunned them. That was the easiest and most gentle form of removing a dangerous person from a group. And in some small groups that exist today, it's still done. Basically what they do is the leadership is like, okay, you are no longer a part of our group. And from this moment forward, 
we don't see you, we don't hear you, we don't share resources with you. And people literally will not look at the person, will not talk to the person, will not share anything with them. They're not violent about it, but they're just completely ostracizing a person from the group, which eventually leads to that person moving on because they need to go find a new small group or they need to try to go make it on their own, which nowadays that's a lot easier to do. But during the Ice Age, not the easiest thing to do. Other ways we handled those things back in the day, just driving out. Like, look, we are just driving you out. We're running after you screaming, run, go, don't come back, go find someplace else. And sometimes those people would end up with another small group and everything would be great. But the goal was we cannot keep this person in the group because they are a threat in some way to our group. Now, nowadays, people on a Discord server, probably not a threat to the lives of the people in the group in most cases, but a perceived threat to the group is still handled the same way. I'm not saying we kill people. I'm saying we shun people. We ostracize people. That is hardwired into us as a behavior. It's what we do. Another thing is group think. We become a group of people who all think the same way. You're like, well, that's why we all came together. Is it really why we all came together? Or did we all come together over a shared love of something when we're talking about fandom? Now, when we're talking about living together in small communities during the Ice Age, we came together to survive, right? And so we formed in order to maintain the harmony and cohesiveness and cooperation of the group, we formed group think, which means we all thought the same way. We, we all just shared the same set of, uh, we, we think about things the same way, we share the same values, group think, okay? So group think is something that we, as groups, do really well, but it can also become a really big problem. Rituals, like in the Monster High fandom, right? Every Friday the 13th, we made a big deal out of it because, you know, Monster High, Friday the 13th, right? <laughs> Every fandom has some kind of ritual. Maybe it's that we all watch the Nintendo Direct together or that immediately after Nintendo Direct, we're all gonna jump on the server and rip it apart, right? But we have rituals. We have ways that we do things. And that is a huge reinforcer of our idea identity as a small group, as a fandom. And these are the great things that help us form bonds, that help us form small communities. We are hardwired this way. They are also the things that can make things go really, really wrong. What the heck are we supposed to do? Well, I have five ways for you to avoid fandom toxicity and uh, to survive it and not let it ruin your experience. Number one, use the tools at your disposal. So when we're talking about online fandoms, and by the way, I'm gonna make a third video about in-person cons and how to handle that situation. But for purposes of this discussion right now, I'm talking about online fandom toxicity. Use the tools at your disposal. You've got block, you've got the ability to mute, you've got the ability to completely ignore a thread. It's going south, people are losing it, it's disturbing to you, it's riling up your emotions, stop reading it. Discord is getting out of control. T take a break for a couple of days. Let, let, let the negativity burn itself out. Go do something else. Do not engage. That is your number one best option. Do not engage in the negativity. Number two way to handle this is Boundaries. Create ironclad boundaries for yourself. You should do this in all of your life, but in particularly in fandom. Well, what the heck do you mean by creating boundaries? Boundaries are, and you can sit down and write this out if you need to for yourself. What are my boundaries within my fandom? Okay, so one boundary for me is I, I'm just not going to get involved in the negative discourse. Just not going to. I'm just, I'm not going to read it because it's going to upset me. Or, or I'm going to feel a real need to just jump in there and say something. It's just better to not stir. I don't want to stir up my negative emotions. So in order to protect myself, I have set a boundary that said, like, if I see, like, a post that I, okay, that just from the title there, I know that's going to be a shit show. Mm -mm. I'm not going to read it. I'm just not going to read it. If I am in a thread about something and people start to get negative and nasty, I'm like, okay, peace out, not reading this anymore. Um, I unfollow people, I snooze people, I hide threads, I do whatever I can because my boundary is I want to enjoy my fandom and I do not want negativity in my life. It's your boundary. This is your world. You block stuff. You make the boundaries. Boundaries are extremely important in life. 
I will at some point do an entire video just about boundaries because this is so important in all areas of your life. To have really ironclad boundaries will make your life so much better. Number three, no gossip. What? What? What are you talking about? No, 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 no. I must gossip. Okay, look. I love, duh, putting a past tense on that, gossip. I used to read all of the celebrity gossip magazines back in my 30s when Perez Hilton was a thing. I was refreshing that stuff all day long. Love celebrity gossip. I also used to be, and a lot of you are going to find this kind of like, what? I just in general used to love gossip. And I would be like the kind of person, especially like in my 20s and early 30s, it was kind of like, if you don't have anything nice to say about someone, come sit next to me. Gossip is so toxic. Gossip is just, it, it's wrong, it's toxic. And, but we get a little bit of a thrill out of gossip. And there are like some studies that have investigated how gossip actually, before we've, you know, become modern and we don't need it to survive, how the gossip situation helped us to survive as a species. And so it's still kind of in us and that's why we respond to it. But you know what? Like many of those legacy things that are in us, we don't have do. We can exercise our, our free will and, and our boundaries and our skills, our social skills to not do it. Just don't. Avoid the gossip. Gossip is like the killer of, of good fun fandom and then gossip is how fandoms become so toxic. Take a break from your fandom. When things like, so with Supernatural, things got really out of control around the second to last episode of the whole series and people started getting really, really deep in the weeds nasty to the point where they were accusing actors of being homophobic. It, it just, they were just, it got really unfun. And you know what I did? I stopped reading it. I stopped checking the tag on Twitter and Tumblr and Instagram and I just took myself a little break. I let them do their thing. And then it came back a couple months later and it had died down and now we're back to just like, well, I really wish we still had Supernatural. Hey, I'm rewatching what season you have. Do you want to do a watch party? Oh my gosh, I really love this character. Oh man, Charlie's awesome. Okay, so we got back to that. But sometimes you have to let like the toxicity burn itself out in a fandom and you need to walk away for a little while in order to let that happen. Don't be afraid to take a break. It will be there when you come back. Or when you take a break from that server group, whatever, you might find another group where a whole bunch of people who hated that stuff have started a server for the happy people. And the happy people are over there now. That happens too. Tip number five. It's my favorite tip. It's my favorite tip in life. Be positive. Be the change you want to see in the world. If you want to see happy, fun, encouraging, uplifting stuff in your fandom, be that. Be the person who posts the positive stuff. Be the person who comments and likes the positive stuff. Be the person who supports the positive people. Or if the stuff gets really, really toxic, go start your own positive branch of the fandom. Go start a new tribe with the happy, fun, positive people. Again, it's a boundaries thing. There are actually more people out there in your fandom who want to just enjoy, embrace, have fun, share art, and do all of those things about their fandom in a positive, happy way than there are trolls. The problem is, is that trolls talk a lot, they post a lot, and they can kind of take over a fandom. So if that happens, go start a new positive branch of your fandom or go find the positive branch of your fandom. And if you have been liking, sharing, communicating with the happy, positive people, then you guys can do it together. You know, I've, uh, I've done it. I've seen my son do it. You know, he's left servers where we're like, all right, I'm sorry, me and the cool people are just gonna, we're gonna just talk over here and build up a new server where the people are happy. Because the majority of people do want to love and share what they love. Remember, that's what we talked about. That's the life affirming parts of fandom. And so the way to do that is for you to be that. Don't engage with the negativity. Have ironclad boundaries. Don't get into the gossip. Walk away, take a break, and be positive. Be positive. Don't let trolls steal your joy. Don't let negative people steal your joy. And you know, it broke my heart. There was a comment um, specifically about someone who used to post their art in their fandom and that people were really negative and nasty about their art. And that hurt them so deeply that they stopped drawing their fan art and now they only draw their own original stuff. So first of all, great that you're still drawing. But then I saw somebody else who had stopped drawing altogether. 
that's the kind of stuff that breaks my heart. And that's why I think it's really important for us to be the positive people, for us to be the change we want to see in our fandom. Because while people are bashing someone's art, you can be there lifting them up and supporting them. You can be that one person who is like, wow, this is really cool. I love the way you did that shading. You can support someone in a positive way without saying, okay, you haters all suck, blah, blah, blah. I totally disagree with you. That's not positive. Positive is just commenting on what you like about the art, what you think is really good. How like, wow, you're so talented. I love the way you do hands. Be positive, be positive. And then you can help steer your own experience of a fandom out of toxicity and back into joy. Takes a little work, but trust me, it is so worth it because fandom is a really, really beautiful thing. And I will say that as you get older, fandom does get a little bit easier because you develop, hopefully, in your adult life, more of these skills and, and abilities. So I promised you that I was gonna share with you my uh, worst fandom experience, and it was in the Monster High fandom. And it was early on when we had uh, started our channel, and someone decided to hate us, and not only did they, you know, make nasty comments, which I was able to like block them, but then they would create new accounts and I would have to block them again. But then they also started posting hate rants about us and about other Monster High um, YouTubers on YouTube. And I was like, the heck? What, like, what? And they were saying really hateful stuff. And I didn't know about it. So somebody messaged me and said, hey, FYI, this person is doing this. And I did what I should not have done. I went and watched it and I let it get to me. And I was really hurt. I was very upset. I was very angry. I wanted to respond so much. And uh, they said things about my kid. I was like, I was so, first of all, it was like, it was just like somebody just like pooped on something I love, right? By like, just like bringing this real nasty darkness into this. And then I'm like reading the comments on the hate videos and I'm like, oh, all these people are agreeing with this person. Like, what the heck? Ouch. Oh my gosh. And it just like, it was like really, oh my gosh. It was really getting to me. And I was very, very lucky that another YouTuber contacted me. And they were way bigger YouTube YouTuber um, than I am. They actually contacted me. And they were like, hey, um, just wanted to reach out to you. I know you're new and I know that you're probably freaking out about this. Um, I'm here if you wanna talk about it. And the best way to handle situations like this is to just not engage and just don't watch it. Just don't, just don't, just don't feed the trolls. And um, it, it was really helpful because I was so ready to feed that troll an all you can eat buffet. And because I was so mad, but I was so lucky that someone came in and brought the positivity back in. And, and instead of saying, let's join together to like throw hate back at that person, this person said, hey, you know, it'd be awesome. Why don't we collaborate on something together? And it wasn't in response to the hater. It wasn't like, hey, we'll show them by collaborating together. It was just like, hey, you know, we really love it too. Our kids are around the same age. It would be really cool if we collaborated together. Do you want to do that? And I was like, that would be awesome. Thank you. And so that person taught me how to ignore my haters. Um, and there now have been many over the nine years and how not to engage, when to use, when and how to use the tools. Um, and, you know, if, if, if somebody's, you know, outing your personal information, how to handle that, you know, with the, the proper, um, you know, authorities of the different, you know, whatever system you're on, if it's YouTube, Instagram, Discord, Tumblr, whatever, you can report people for stuff like that. Um, and, and just how not to let it steal my joy. And I was so grateful for that because it really was there for a little while, really stealing my joy away from this thing that had been in so many ways like life affirming and and like a rebirth for me and this thing that I was doing with my kid and it was so awesome and like I said it was like this person just came and took a big dump on it and it really really hurt and it upset me and I wanted to fight back but I am so glad that I didn't because you know what happened they just went away I don't know what they went on to I don't know 
what their next, you know, mission in life was, um, but they moved on. Whereas if I had fed the troll, it would have become a really different and ugly situation. And, uh, you know, it hurt, but here I am nine years later, still talking about Monster High when I can, if the dolls ever come back, and, and still doing what I love. So you can really, 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 really do that. You can take a stand, you can create boundaries, you can be positive, and you can get yourself out of the toxic piece of your fandom and back into the parts that you love without leaving the fandom. You just have to follow those five steps. And I would also like to say, I would love for you all to share your advice about ways that you have been able to stay in a fandom that you love and avoid the toxicity and how you set boundaries, how you use tools. I don't use Discord, so I don't know what the tools are. So if someone could share that, that would be really, really helpful. And I hope that this helped people feel a little bit better about fandoms and maybe start to think that maybe you can return, uh, return to some fandoms, that maybe you can dip your toe into it again, um, especially online. Online is a, is a much safer situation than when you're meeting people in person, because when you're meeting people in person, which we're gonna talk about in another video, then it, it really feels very personal. <laughs> But trust me, you can still handle it. I know you can, and I'm gonna to try to help you do that. Thank you so much for watching. We just hit 25,000 subscribers. Mind you, this channel already had a lot of subscribers because it used to be a different channel, but it was nice to see the number go up. Uh, I, I loved my external validation and I really, really appreciate it. And I just really love that you guys are talking to me and you're sharing your feelings. I can't tell you how much that means to me and I want you to continue to do that. And I want you to help guide me in what you need from me. Your comments on that video made me realize that I needed to provide you with some more skills and based on my experiences. I'm not a therapist, I'm just a 53 year old woman who's been through a lot of stuff. And so any way that I can help you or share some knowledge and advice, I want to do that. It just, I really, really want us all honestly and truly to get better together. All of us. You help me, I help you. It's going to be great. I love you guys so much. Remember that you are loved by many, many people, even when sometimes it doesn't feel like it. I will see you again real soon. Love you. Bye.